Hi, I'm Norm Norlander. I'm the guy that created the Norvice and the automatic retractable bobbin. Together, this is known as the Norvice fly tying system. Likely you've seen one of the previous Norvice videos. These are available at norvice.com and they dealt primarily with how the tools work. Now in response to numerous requests, I'm going to be tying some actual patterns with special techniques using the Norvice. The intent here is to share with you some thoughts and ideas that have been very helpful for me over the years, as well as tie some actual fly patterns that I found to be very effective. Your thoughts, suggestions, and ideas be much appreciated for future topics for how to tie butterflies faster with a Norvice. After nearly a lifetime of fly fishing and fly tying, I'm very fortunate. I now have an area that I can call my own dedicated to this activity. What I'd like to show you, however, will apply and be useful for even the most basic fly tying setup. Let's take a look at some of the uh, setup that we have here. Uh, start out with our bench or desk or table, whatever you want to call it. The one I have is it has plenty of room, has a nice light surface, uh, very easy to clean. It uh, gives you great contrast when you're looking uh, uh, at the fly itself. Uh, underneath we have a waste basket. I have built in a drawer here to keep our tools. It works really great. Now the chair I have is very, very comfortable. You can see it'll swivel around a little bit. One of the other things that's kind of neat is put a hard mat underneath your chair. In the case that you drop some hooks or materials, they're a whole lot easier to pick up there than they are if they're embedded in a carpet. Next is the lighting. Now we have a pretty good fluorescent light up above. In addition, I have a Norvice fly tying lamp. These are fluorescent fixtures. The light is cool. It's white. It's like outdoor lighting. Just absolutely wonderful. Once we get a little bit older, you'll find that having extra light really is helpful. Now storage is also a big issue with fly tires. You can see this cabinet back here. There's a matching cabinet on the other side which gives me 60 some odd drawers. They're labeled of course because there's no way I can remember what's in 60 odd drawers. And it seems, especially as we get more involved in this sport, the squirrel instinct kicks in and we want to accumulate a lifetime supply of nearly every fly tying material that we run across. Now let's take a look at how we have our vise set up in the tying surface itself. Mine is actually a Corian sink cutout. I've got my Norvice bolted directly through that, right to the table. It makes it really solid. Notice the nice light color. That's important. It gives you really good contrast. You know, a lot of professional fly tires, they'll have a glass plate down here, and they put colored paper underneath it. Dark colors or light colors, depending on what gives them the best contrast with the flies that they're working on. Here's something else I'd like to share with you. This is called a beading mat. You can get these at places like Michael's, the artsy craftsy stores. They're built for beaters so that you can put beads on there and they don't roll off on the floor. They're easy to pick up. Also, you can pick up your hooks a lot easier. They won't stick in the mat. You can roll them around like that. You can pick up individual hooks. Really great. It's a neat little trick. Now, the other thing that I do is I have a hand towel, such as we have right here. And I'm going to take the materials that I'm going to actually assemble into a finished fly, like, like one of these uh, uh, arch browns. And we'll take our bodies after we've completed them. We have our post material, our hackles. The neat thing about the towel is that you can pick up components like this really easy. You can also put your feathers down and they won't blow off this nearly as easy as they would off a hard surface. Just a couple ideas. Try it. I think you'll really like it. I'd like to talk to you a little bit now about material preparation. The way I like to do this is tie what I call a test pattern. This is where we experiment with the material that we're going to use, the color, the hackle selection, the hook style, and try to get everything just right. Go slow. Think it out. Make each step just perfect. Make adjustments in the sizes and, that, and how the materials look. And when you've got it figured out, 
We have a couple cold patterns. You can go fish with them, or you can throw them away. But now we're ready to put together the materials to do some serious fly tying. Okay, once we've determined exactly how many flies we're going to tie, the size and the colors of the materials that we're going to use, now it's time to take these materials and clean them, stack the tailing material, uh, select your hackles, trim them, divide up your post materials. Okay, at this point, clean off your entire desk. Put away everything we're not going to use. Keep out only the materials we're going to use, like we have here, and we're ready to go.